to the point where day one, I mean, Irene, who's still with me as my virtual assistant, like she, she and I have a bond because now it's like she helped me start this and I couldn't have done it without her. The insurance industry is so stuck in the dark ages sometimes. And I work for so many different brokerages and they all do the same thing over and over again. And I'm just like, how do we break that mold? And part of it is with the virtual assistants, we're finding new ways to keep that high touch level of service, incorporating technology because it's so necessary and makes our lives so much easier. But that high touch, that high level of customer service is so critical in my opinion, and is really part of our values and the foundation of this organization. So um, that was really important for me to not lose that. And I think that the virtual assistants make that possible. That's cool. I'm, I'm curious because, you know, with the great resignation that's happening right now, the hunt for talent, I mean, we're obviously talking about virtual assistants on this call, but I'm curious with your expertise, like, how do you craft a benefits package that employees like raise their hand and say, wow, that's special. So in creating a package, you have to get really creative, especially with small businesses. You know, companies in California that are under 100 fall into just booked rates, age banded based on where the company is headquartered. And that's it. There's no negotiating power. If you go to the broker next door, they're going to show you the same exact plans as I am. I think mm. where we really differentiate is in thinking outside of the box. What are the things that we can do based on the information that we have to create a package that competes, especially here in Silicon Valley, we're right in the heart of it, that competes with Tesla and Facebook. I mean, Tesla is right here, literally in my backyard in Fremont. So right. these, are the, these are the challenges that small businesses are facing. How do we compete with these gigantic companies that have unlimited amount of resources. They can design any benefit plan that they want when we're tied to this small group and we don't have a lot of choice. So where I come in is I don't look at my clients as a dollar sign. I see them just for what they are and what they're trying to accomplish. So if we can do that in creative ways where maybe my agency makes less money, right? Because we're tied to commissions based on insurance carrier premiums. And those get squeezed over time. So why I'm out to kind of rescue the small to mid-sized businesses is because the large brokers know that they're a lot of work and not a lot of return on investment. So let's dive in. Um, you've been a client for some time now. You've hired a couple of virtual professionals. I want to hear the story. Like, how'd you hear about us? What are you yeah. using them for? How should other insurance and benefit brokers like use a virtual assistant, all the, all the fun stuff. Yeah, it's been great. So I never really considered it. I didn't know too much about virtual assistants when I was first starting the business and I was talking to my business coach and I was getting to the point where, okay, everything is in place to launch. How am I going to do this all on my own? Cause I didn't have a business partner in the beginning. It was just me and actually my husband who was helping me do all the paperwork and all that stuff. <laughs> Yep. But he has a full-time job, so I couldn't hire him and I can't afford him right now. So I had to come up with some way and I'm freaking out, right? I'm talking to my business coach. How am I going to manage this? Insurance is so administratively burdensome, so administratively heavy that I was just like, I can't sell business and be tied down with enrollments, terminations, data entry, Excel sheets. Like it's just... I will never have time to grow the business. So my business coach was like, have you considered a virtual assistant? And at first I was like, no, that would never work for our industry. It's so regulated. It's, you got to explain it. It's complex. And finally, I started doing some research on a Sunday as I'm working on the business. I'm like, I got to, I got to take something into consideration. I had no money to be able to pay somebody. This is a bootstrap business. I put all my savings into it and, you know, I needed it for, to get the business going. And so I started looking, researching virtual assistant companies and I read some reviews and I came across Mod and I had a consultation with Jeremy Tuck, who we're still in contact with. He's awesome. Um, and we just clicked and I felt like he really understood my needs and really understood, you know, the complexity and kind of put me at ease as to like, no, this, 
this is actually a possibility. This could actually be huge for you because you don't have to go out looking for somebody that has, you know, tons of administrative experience and take your time interviewing and that whole process. We can get going like right now, <laughs> so which was the other really cool thing that it could just be done so quickly to the point where day one, I mean, Irene, who's still with me as my virtual assistant, like she, she and I have a bond because now like she helped me start this and I couldn't have done it without her. How did you onboard somebody to feel like a partner? I think with Irene, I really made her feel like she is a part of the team because she really is like I honestly could not have done this without her. And she's involved in every meeting every morning with my account management team. She knows what's going on with every single client, even though she doesn't necessarily like talk to them. And so, you know, in this virtual world, you could be anywhere anyway. So it, you kind of have to learn that skill anyway, to feel, make people feel like they're part of the team when they're not close by. That's amazing. Anna, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been really fun. My pleasure. This was a lot of fun and not as scary as I expected it to be. <laughs> that, we'll end with that. Not as scary as I thought it would be. There you go. Thanks, <laughs> thanks again.